I'm Not a Gentleman is a production of Chase and Ryder.com. Yo, what up? Welcome to I'm Not a Gentleman, a show designed to help you look stylish without following trends. I'm your host, Vladimir Arvishe, your favorite menswear YouTuber's favorite menswear YouTuber. I've helped dozens of clients and hundreds of students and viewers feel more confident by looking their best and always making a great first impression. This is episode 26, which is a wardrobe audit episode. We do those every Friday, and they're the even number episodes, starting with episode 24 last week. This is a very special episode. I have my friend, Asan, aka the Style Jumper. But Asan is not just a friend, he's also a business partner. Him, Style Architect, and myself, we form what's called the Menswear Mastermind, and we're going to talk more about that towards the end of the episode. But without further ado, let's get to the coaching call. Yo, son, what's good, man? Yo, what's up? What's up, fam? Yo, so glad to have you on here. As you know, as you know, this is the wardrobe audit episode. Uh, this is the episode that we do every Friday on I'm Not a Gentleman podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is always going to be the even number episode. So this is episode 26. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my man is son, a.k.a. Style Jumper. We are really good friends, and we actually have a partnership together in the Menswear Mastermind. We'll be talking more about that um, towards the end. But I've spoken about Isan before a few times on the podcast. He's really into thrifting. I call him the thrift god. So Isan, let the people know what's good. Yo, man, it's it's amazing to be here. You know, every now and then, a coach got to get coached, right? So it's just great to to have that opportunity to talk to you about something that, you know, I need growth on and growth in. And so I'm excited to talk to the classic God. No doubt. <laughs> now, speaking of, man, what exactly are you looking to get um more information about? Well, for me, Vlad, it's like I spend a lot of time between, you know, thrifted goods. I wear a lot of sport coats. I probably own like 40 sport coats mm. um, and maybe three suits. And if I'm not wearing that combination of, you know, trousers or chinos and a sport coat, I'm wearing joggers, you know, and an elevated look with joggers. Um, They give it that mix between, you know, our hip hop era, but a grown man's version, you know, that adult street approach uh, to to a look being, you know, a grown man. So. So, yeah, man, this is going to be an interesting conversation. Nice. So tell the people a little bit about where you are, like what kind of weather are you dealing with in your um, side of town? Okay. Uh, I'm in D.C. Metro, uh, actually in Maryland specifically. And so here okay. it's cold, it's wet. You know, it's, it's fairly close to, you know, the temperatures from Philadelphia and New York. Obviously, New York is a little bit colder. But at the same time, we get, you know, four seasons and it gets pretty cold here depending upon the year. Got it. Got it. It's funny, too, because the um, episode 24, the first episode of the wardrobe audit, um, August, um, who I interviewed last week, also lived in the D.C. area, although he's originally from New York, uh, upstate New York, Rochester, but uh, in the D.C. area, the DMV area as well. Yeah, it's interesting because my approach to things is a lot different because I come from down south. So I have this southern approach. But then I've, I'm world traveled. So, you know, being in the military, it gave me an opportunity to really see the world and see people of color in a completely different way. Sure. Um, and I actually, from the West Coast, I went to Asia. Mm-hmm. So I saw a lot of different things and a lot of brothers, you know, in the military from all around the country, which helped me really hone in on my unique approach and look. Understood. Now, you mentioned that you have about 40 sport coats and three suits. Can you tell me a bit more about the three suits that you do have? So my three suits, um, I have a Navy suit, traditional, uh, a Navy blend suit. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have four. I have a charcoal gray pinstripe Mm -hmm. and more of like a dark mauve style coat, uh, excuse me, a style suit uh, as far as the colors. But those are only four. Okay. And those suits or suits that you're looking to keep or you're looking to replace them with new suits? Ultimately, to replace them with new suits. Okay. Um, since I do tr- thrifting, I want to do the same thing. I want to pay it forward and just want us the opportunity to wear these suits. 
That's nice. That's nice. So yeah. six months from now, you and I get to talk again. Obviously, we talk almost all the time every day. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say six months from now, we're having a conversation and you have the perfect closet in mm -hmm. six months, or the perfect suit closet, I should say. What would that look like? The perfect suit closet would be um, suits, those three, you know, potentially three suits replaced mm -hmm. um, that allow me to to slide in and out of of casual and classic wear, but look really good and fit really well. Um, Cause I wear at work, I wear suits or dress up at least four days a week. Okay. So I'm constantly dressed up. And so I really want to go in with a suit and it'll throw everyone off because I'm typically wearing separates, but then mm -hmm. also just to kind of, you know, up my game because, you know, although I enjoy thrifted pieces and sports coats, my clients, I want to be able to educate them as well on what type of, you know, suits to consider um, as they, you know, evolve their style as well. Understood. So you would say suits right now is definitely the biggest um, point that you're looking to to accomplish. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like I'm good on everything else, but I, I definitely need some insight on classic suit wear. Got you. Now, do you have any 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 specific styles of suits that you favor or you open to um, any suggestion that's going to work for you? I'm open, man. You know, again, you know, I'm coming to get coached and, and learn, you know, I can obviously talk about my body type or my style as far as like my physical build. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I'm open. You know, as long as, you know, as long as I'm not wearing a zoot suit, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I'll be like, Vlad, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good at that one point. <laughs> oh, man, I got you. I got you. Yeah. But uh, so what I always recommend to start is going to be a suit that's very, uh, that's very versatile. Because right. a lot of times we have guys that don't wear suits all the time. Um, but at the same time, they should have a suit that's going to play a lot of different positions. So most guys don't really want to start buying three or four suits all at once. Um, they really want to start with one. And then depending on how that one comes out, then they can move forward with more suits. But most guys typically, what I tell them is let's get on base. We don't really have to hit a home run right off the bat mm -hmm. um, and then take it from there. So this is exactly how I think we should go about it. I think that we should get on base and, okay. um, and move forward with that. Uh, with that said, you did mention you have a navy. Um, you also mentioned that you have a charcoal pinstripe. Um, so those are colors that I typically recommend. I'm still going to recommend those colors because okay. you said you're looking to eventually move forward from those suits and thrift them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to act as if you're not really going to be keeping those suits and we're just starting them. Oh, dope. I'm excited. Uh, Perfect, perfect. So typically, I recommend charcoal as my first suit of choice. Hmm. Um, and Why the reason that? being, yeah, the reason being is because that's a color that's extremely versatile. So you can wear it to the most formal of occasions. Well, I'm not talking about a tuxedo, obviously. We're talking about suits. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, not like a tuxedo um, kind of event. But for everything else, you can definitely wear a charcoal suit. And then... Um, you can also dress it down. So let's say you wear it to work and then you have to go on a date after work. Yeah. You can easily wear it to the date. Let's say you have to go to even something less formal than that. You can take your tie off and, you know, still look um, well put together in your charcoal suit. Well, would um, I now, wear that in the summer, though? I mean, like I'm thinking like it's January right now. Mm -hmm. So as the weather changes, a charcoal suit, something I would wear in warmer weather. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because now it's going to depend on the material more than the color itself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I still wear um, charcoal or navy in the spring and summer, as I do yeah. in the fall and winter. It's more about the fabric and how heavy the fabric is um, or how gotcha. light the fabric is more mm -hmm. than the color of the fabric itself. Got it. If that makes sense. Yeah, it totally, totally makes sense. All right. So, so what would you, you, what as far as a gray suit? Uh huh. Or, or um, charcoal gray, what what would be the fabric of my first suit? So that's what I really want to talk to you about. So there are two different ways we can go about this. The first way is to go with something that's going to be able to play all four seasons. So typically, um, depending on the situation, I always recommend for guys to have a, um, a wardrobe that's going to be um, 
for the season that they're in. Mm-hmm. So it's like two different wardrobes, one for spring and summer and one for fall and winter. But also it's important, especially when you're talking about um, staying within budget, that you mm-hmm. get something that's going to be four seasons as opposed to something that just caters to a particular set of seasons, Got you it. know? So for you, I want to start with something that's going to be um, four season, especially right now we are in mid, um, well, we're heading towards mid January. Mm-hmm. So um, realistically, there's about three months left of, of winter, if that, yeah. maybe two months, two and a half yeah, months, two, something like that. Two strong months for sure. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think something four seasons is going to give you more um, opportunity to wear it, you know, and okay. then we can talk again in the summer and then probably look forward to get you something that's going to be heavier at that point. Okay, got it. You know, uh, but let's get the style together and okay. then we'll know exactly what you like and then we can move forward to getting other things later on. But okay. I would recommend something for a season, maybe like a shark skin kind of fabric hmm. um, or even something like one thing that I'm really big on is um, even when, for example, if I'm going to a wedding, right, and everybody's wearing a dark suit, let's say, you know, most guys are going to be in Navy. Um, some are going to be in charcoal. Most of the time I'm in charcoal, but let's say I'm wearing Navy and most guys are in Navy. Hmm. I still wear a different kind of Navy that when you get up close, it's going to look different than most navy so i like herringbone um i like bird's eye yeah. um those from a distance they just look like a regular navy right but when you yeah. get up close you can see that's a little bit different mm-hmm. than the see other the detail navies. yeah exactly yeah. so Got for it. you that's what i would recommend um i would recommend a charcoal soup but i would ha- recommend it in a herringbone um mm-hmm. that way from a distance it still looks charcoal mm-hmm. but when someone gets up close they'll see that oh this is a little bit different I love herringbone too, so that'll work perfect. What about yeah. like someone's build? I'm more like an athletic build guy. Mm-hmm. Um, six one, two two oh five somewhere yep. around there. Yeah. So for most guys, I recommend. When I, I don't want to say for most guys, for for guys that are built already, like me for example, I have really strong shoulders, right? So I don't mm. need a suit that's going to add to that, you know. So mm. I favor more the Neapolitan style, you know, which is like a right. soft shoulder um, versus let's say something English that's going to have stronger shoulders. Mm-hmm. So for you, because you are already in really good shape, um, I would recommend something like that for you, you know, where it's like um, you don't need the extra padding in the shoulders, you know? Got so it. something Neapolitan is something that I would recommend. Um, also, I would recommend something with wider lapels because mm-hmm. the lapels, they really accentuate your your physique you know as a, i see a lot of guys walking around with scampy lapels maybe mm-hmm. sub three inches and i'm like oh man that's a lost opportunity you mm-hmm. know because a larger lapel is going to have a, a nicer presence okay. and it's also going to be more timeless so Love like it. right now my lapels are around four and a half inches um i am a bit wider than you are um but so you don't have to necessarily do a four and a half Mm-hmm. Um, but I would think like something around four inches um, would be would work really well for you. OK, that's um, so, so that's what I would recommend. Um, and also one thing about the Neapolitan um, style suits, they're going to be a three wool two configuration, which means that it has three buttons, mm-hmm. but it's really a two button suit because the top button is hidden behind the lapel. Got it. So most people wouldn't be wouldn't know that it's actually a three button suit. It just looks like any other two button suit. Um, okay. you're more liable to see the buttonhole, um, as opposed to the button itself, because once again, the button is hidden. Got it. Got it. It's interesting you say Neapolitan too, because I've always kind of, and people have said that to me, like I have like a, a, Euro, a European vibe, if you will, mm-hmm. just how I move with, I don't know what that's about, but it's, it's yeah. interesting you say that. And even with my, my build, the Neapolitan style makes sense. So it's interesting. Yeah, I, we, I can definitely see you in that. Um, and I think that'll work really, really well for you. Got it. Now, tell me a bit about your trouser style, because I know you have a lot of out trousers. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have anything specific or are you open in that category as well? Because I have a lot to say about trousers. Yeah, I, you know, I'm open. You know, I, I've gone away from pleated trousers. 
I've, I've seen inverted pleats. That's really interesting. Um, I like side tabs as well and flat panel. So those those are my typical side tabs and flat panel. Um, so uh, again, I'm open to uh, some pleats if it if it's not too full in the leg. Got it. Got it. So when you say you went when you say you went away from um, pleated trousers, what was the reason behind that? It was years ago, man. So it, I have to be honest. It, it was uh, the transition of depleted to flat panel, mm -hmm. probably 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. I think it was, um, where a lot of offerings, you know, a lot of off the rack for sure yeah. um, was flat panel. And, yep. you know, I felt like it because of my my build in my mind, I thought that the the flat panel looked looked better on me. Mm -hmm. versus um, the pleated pants. I felt I kind of felt like I was looking more like an old man, like my dad, if you will, versus leaner and taller. Never tight. Well, I had a couple of pairs that was too tight. I came mm -hmm. front. <laughs> but, gotcha. But yeah, that, that's, that's why I made that transition. Got it. That makes sense. And that's very interesting too, because that is something that I hear a lot from guys, mm -hmm. um, that the pleats make them look like they are older. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I realized also is a lot of guys that feel this way is because they're not wearing the proper trousers. Mm -hmm. Because if the trousers are regular, as far as the the rise of the trousers, right? Like it's a regular rise, it's not a high rise, and then it has pleats. It's just horrible, you know. It definitely mm -hmm. is going to make you look old manish, and this is not what we're going for, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if yeah. you do have what I find at least. Um, you don't have to go with the pleated trousers. I'm just telling you like what I've seen mm -hmm. um, and, and in my experience is if you have the proper um, rise on the trousers, like the the waistband is around your belly button and mm -hmm. then you have pleats on the trousers, it's just going to make everything better, you know? Mm -hmm. And also it plays a role. So it's not just something that looks good. It also plays a function because it gives you more room in that area. So when you sit, then your trousers are going to be more comfortable because the plates are going to open to allow more room in that Interesting. area. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And, I, I'm um, open to try it. I'm open to try it. I'd love to try on a pair of, mm -hmm. you know, pleated pants or trousers yep. and see now, based on what you suggested, you know, how would they fit me versus on my hips? That, make, that, that definitely makes sense. I think we should definitely try it. And also one thing we can try, we can do a single pleat as opposed to double pleat. So they don't hmm. have to be two on each side. We can just do a yeah. single pleat. And um, also you mentioned um, an inverted pleat. So with um, with the Neapolitan, most of the time is going to be a single reverse pleat, hmm. meaning that the pleat opens in the same direction as your pocket hmm. versus the yeah. English style is going to be more of a, um, forward pleat where the pleat opens in the same direction as the fly. So um, I, there's not really one that's better than the other. It really comes down to preference. Even myself, mm -hmm. I don't really have a preference. Most of my trousers happen to be single reverse. That's because those are off the rack um, mm -hmm. and the company that I use, that's what they they favor. But okay. when I'm getting something custom made, I typically go for um, either a double reverse or a single reverse. Just, I mean, double forward or single forward just to have something different from my off the rack offerings. Got it. Because you know, I haven't worn a, I've owned a custom suit mm -hmm. uh, since two thousand, like way back when I was in the Navy and got a suit made in Singapore and my military uniform. So I haven't had anything custom since, and everything has been on the off the rack. Gotcha. Now, how do you feel about cuffs? I like cuffs. I like Do the you? way cuffs look on me a lot. So I'm okay. open to it. All right. That's good to hear, man, because this, this is one of those things. Sometimes I have to twist people's arms into into thinking about getting cuffs. Not okay. all the time, because most of the guys that come to me, um, they already know how I dress. Um, so they kind of already have an idea of what I'm going to talk to them about. And yeah. what I love about um, cuffs is just like pleats, not only do they look good, they also play a function as well. And that's with um, how the trousers are going to lay on the shoes. Mm -hmm. Because with, uh, with cuffs, um, the trousers are going to be heavier at the bottom. 
So that's going to definitely help with that. So they're definitely going to drape a lot better on the shoes than if they didn't have the cuffs, you know? So personally, I have the two inch cuffs on all of my trousers. Um, I'm 5'10 for reference. So if someone is 5'8 and under, then I would say they probably want to do one and a half um, as opposed to two inches. But from 5'9 and up, you know, two inches is fine. Of course, if a guy is like six three, six four, six five, they can even go for like two and a quarter or something like Got that it. on their cuff. You know, so I would definitely recommend um, two inches on the on the trousers uh, on the cuff on the, the trousers. Cuff. You. Yeah, and so so you suggest all, so all of your trousers are cuffed. You couldn't you pay me enough money. With, you couldn't pay huh? me enough money to wear trousers without cuffs. Really? Yeah, you couldn't pay me enough money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only trousers that don't have cuffs would be tuxedo trousers. Okay. Obviously. Right. Um, Fair. Yeah, but you couldn't Fair. pay me. There's not enough money someone can pay me to be like, yeah, <laughs> from now on, you're not wearing any cuffs. You know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. no, no more straight, no more yeah. uh, non-cuffed pant, no trousers. Got yeah, it. yeah. That's the same way I feel about pleats too. Okay. But I feel even stronger about cuffs because pleats, sometimes people can see if you have pleats or not, you know? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you wear your jacket and they can't yeah. see that, you know, but the trousers, the cuffs are always going to be visible. So, yep. yeah, I, I, I have police on everything. I mean, I okay. have cuffs on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, one of those things. Up. Yeah, okay. once you once you have that um, that preference and you you can't really see it any other way after that, mm. you know, some guys, they don't really have a preference. It's like, oh, whatever, I can do cuffs, I can do no cuffs. But with me, I feel so strongly about it that whenever I, I see that a uh, pair of trousers don't have it, it's it's not for me. I'm typically a person that likes to to be somewhat of a contradiction at times when it comes to style, mm-hmm. just just from my the way I see things. But mm-hmm. my thought is with my suits, I'll definitely go with the cuff just to maintain it and keep it looking classic because I'll lean. Yeah on the classic suit. So that's why I'm here today. So it works. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also sometimes I've had guys say, just like you mentioned that the police could be considered like old man ish. Mm -hmm. Um, I've heard the same about cuffs and Mm -hmm. I'll say the same thing about pleats where they're not wearing the right cuffs. So this, this isn't your father's cuffs to when guys was wearing, let's say like a one inch cuff. Yeah. On the on the khakis or something like that. You know, this is mm-hmm. not that. So two inch cuffs definitely have more of a presence to them. And they just look the part when you're talking about uh the side tabs, you're talking about the pleats, you're talking about the high rise. Um, the cuffs just fits right in. You know, so, so what would um, you say with the break, Vlad though? Like if I have a you know, two inch cuff, mm-hmm. then what's typically your suggestion for the break? So with break I definitely leave that up to preference. So personally, I either do no break or a very slight break. So I'm actually mm. transitioning from having my uh, my leg opening be eight inches to nine inches. So mm. my trousers are going to be a bit wider now um, than they were before. And Why? with that, um, like I've had a couple of trousers when I look at pictures and I'm like, man, I wish the legs were were wider on these they would drape better so Mm -hmm. i'm i'm not a fan of the extremes right so i don't like a really small cuff i don't like a really white cuff right but so i want to be somewhere in the middle although nine inches is more leaning towards like a wider cuff right Mm -hmm. but um eight inches is leaning towards more of a, a smaller cuff so um with the with the nine inch leg opening I feel like my pants are going to drape a lot better. Okay. So it's something that I'm, I'm experimenting with. Um, so I have a suit that's being made right now. They sent me the trial suit. I tried it on, took some nice. pictures, sent the um, the pictures back to them. So now I'm just waiting for the final product to, to get here. So that's going to be my first suit, actually. Or should I say my first pair of trousers where the opening are going to be um, nine inches. Nine inches. Nice. So okay. it's just for it to drape better. Once again, I don't, I've seen guys wear 10 inches and even, even 11 inches nowadays I've seen. Uh, I don't think that's never going to be me um, yeah. because even the eight inches, sometimes some of them do look good, but at the same time, some of them I look and I'm like, I wish those were um, a bit wider. Hmm. So, okay. so we, we're going to experiment with that and see. 
But to answer your question, with the nine inch leg opening, I'm going to have a very slight break versus with my eight inch one, I didn't have a break at all. Got it. So for you, I would say it's pretty much whatever you like in that in that department. Got it. Versus um, me trying to dictate it. Where, where, where do you think you'd be heading with that as far as the break? It's, it's interesting you ask. I'm envisioning no break. Mm -hmm. The cuff gives that look to me. And that's really um, with the with the no cuff. You know, yeah. it was like I like the fact that it, it was no breaks, no cuff. But to have a cuff and no break, I think mm -hmm. that'll look really, really good. So gotcha. um, I'm definitely um, interested in going that route. Got it. Got it. That's perfect, man. So that's what I would recommend. Now, are you looking to possibly get something custom or do you think that you'd be looking to get something off the rack? My first suit would be off the rack, I would say, because mm -hmm. I want to see, you know, kind of transition. And um, each time I make more dough or, you know, another opportunity happens where I can invest more, then I'll, I'll get a, a custom suit. But right now, I think the off the rack would be the way to go. Where sure. do you recommend I, I start to look off the rack? Yeah. So um, what budget do you think you want to stay within? Between. Three fifty and five. Three fifty and five. That's perfect. Okay, so for something Neapolitan like what we discussed, um, a company, especially when you're talking about off the rack, mm -hmm. um, a company like Spi and McKay would be what I would recommend for off the rack suit that's going to be in a Neapolitan style. Okay. Um, suit supply does have some styles like that too, but. You're not really going to find things like pleats and um, side tabs and those type of things in that price range. So suit supply, where they really shine is when you go custom because they mm. have endless options uh, okay. in their custom offerings and a lot of fabrics to pick from and everything. So if you're really looking to maximize your uh, your budget, I would say Spie and McKay would be the best in that in that in that price point. Okay. Uh, now, if you, once you get this one and you're looking to get something better in the future, then we can mm -hmm. definitely explore other options still in the Neapolitan style. Okay. Uh, but they, those are going to be a bit more expensive. Uh, so we can definitely talk about those later. But within the $500 price point, typically you might be, you should be able to find something from Spian McKay within that price point. So that means I got to, we got to go hang out in New York together, huh? Is that where? Well, we definitely have, have to hang out in New York together, period, you know? <laughs> so last last time you, you, you came, we couldn't really get together. Yeah. Um, but next time we definitely got to hang out. But with Spie and McKay, it's all online. Oh, so, okay. So what's well, not all online? The store is in Canada. Oh, okay. So um, um, Suit Supply would be the stores that are in um, in New York. I'm sure they have one in D.C. as yeah, well, DC, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, But, yep, exactly. Um, Tyson's Corner, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would um, I would say with Suit Supply, um, that's the store you can walk in. But with, with um, Spear and McKay, you have to do it online. Okay. But they, they do a really good job of listing their measurements online. And you can also take one of the garments that you have that already fit you, and you can measure those and compare it to the measurements they have online. The difference with Spie and Mercado when you shop in online with them is they don't really use vanity sizing. Where a lot of brands, they'll use vanity sizing to make you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'm a 45, right? A lot of companies will tell me I fit in a 44, and I do fit in a 44 for them. But with, with, with um, Spie and McKay, I, I don't fit in a 44 for them. I have to hmm. get a 46 off the rack or 45 when I go custom with them because they don't use those kind of sizing. They're going to use the true size. True size. So okay. you can't just really go. Yeah, exactly. You can't really just go by the size that you take from another maker and mm -hmm. take that size with them. You more have to either measure the garment or probably even size up compared to most makers because <laughs> those, those makers are going to more than likely use vanity sizing. Okay. That's what's up. Uh -huh. So um, being that we in the, um, of the rack um, price point, you may not be able to find something that's, let's say, herringbone or bird's eye, but for sure, you definitely find something that's going to be charcoal. Okay. So we'll definitely look to see um, when you're ready. We'll see what they have and then we'll we'll take it from there. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely request a consultation. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. At, at your service, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Excited. 
Yeah, man. Now, you mentioned before that, uh, or should I say, I mentioned before that you and I were actually um, business partners in a sense. Um, can you tell the people a little bit about exactly what what we do? So what we do is we are a collective of three of us. Yes, sir. My, uh, Vlad, our boy, Style Architect, and myself, Asan, uh, a.k.a. The Style Jumper. And what we do is we have a call every Wednesday. We do a complimentary 30-minute call, 25 minutes, where we talk and we take questions. And the three of us have completely different perspectives. And it really works well because men, as we continue to evolve and, and get more acquainted with men's style and maybe transition and change, you have these unique voices. Then at uh, 825, we hop off. We have a private group um, where you can come on board and you're going to get tons of time with both of, with all three of us to go in deep detail about questions that you won't be able to get answered on a quick call that's a free call that's alive, that's public. And so we also have a Facebook group, um, which is amazing. Um, you can join for uh, Men's Wear Mastermind at $47. Uh, and then if you want to uh, commit to a year, then it's for 70 and you're saving two months. So, which is amazing. Uh, and we talk about everything. We talk about things from not only just clothing, but we mm -hmm. talk about real life situations, mental health. We talk about your personality and how your personality actually um, allows you to respond to things, but also how you interpret things with, for, as far as what you wear, but then That's also right. how you see the world. So it, it's it's dope, man. And guys, if you haven't hopped on on the free call, definitely do it just to hear our conversation, yeah. but then definitely invest it's a nominal fee when you're dividing, you know, $47 <laughs> divided by three people who are, are experts in their in their perspective in the in the field. Um, and you can ask as many questions as you want. It's unlimited. So. So, yeah, Vlad, um, we, we're rocking in there. We got a group of guys who, who <laughs> yes, are, we are, you know, and it's all age ranges. And that's another thing I think that's important. It's just Thanks. not guys um, who are, you know, who are super young. There's guys who are, you know, middle age um, who have questions and, and they still want to learn and get better and refine because the goal is to be refined. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to have these conversations between, you know, Star Architect, Vlad and myself and really, really broaden your perspective because we all have more than one one lane. Thanks. And so this gives you the opportunity to ask those questions. And it's a, it's a place where you can be vulnerable. It's a, it's a it's a trust space um, and it's a space that's needed because a lot of us, you know, we don't have that opportunity to have conversations amongst yeah. men, mm -hmm. um, especially with, with clothes, which is interesting because you, you know, a lot of people get clowned when it comes to clothes. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, you know what I mean? So we get a chance to do that. And, you know, it's every week we're committed to it and um, we'll be excited for you to come on board and, and listen in, but also step into the private group. Yep. And what I like about it is. Like personally, this is how I started in classic menswear was to a group because it was on style form, uh, which is a form with a bunch of threads. And that's how I was able to learn how to really dress because I was always into fashion. Mm -hmm. But my um, what I used to read was GQ magazine, you know, and then I realized that wasn't the right path for me. So I discovered style form and eventually you know, I started to take the advice and started dressing better, but that took two years to put together because there were so many different threads that you have to go back and read and do research and all those things. But the community aspect of it is what I really, really appreciate. And this is what we bring into the forefront. Mm -hmm. And um, you have three mentors. It's not something that you really have to put together. It's already there for you. And uh, just to add to what um, Asan said, the, the, um, the free call is on Instagram, actually. So we do from 8 o'clock to 8.25 on Wednesday nights before we go live at 8.30 inside of the Zoom. And also the private Facebook community is a 24-7 community. So if you have any questions, you can always go there and ask your questions. And if you just join, you'll also have access to all the past recordings. So you're not really missing out on anything. Um, you're just going to find other guys that's already been in the membership and you'll be able to ask questions. If one of the three of us don't get a chance to get to you, I'm sure somebody else will, will be able to answer your questions before we actually get to get to um, answer it ourselves. 
but it's a really, really great community. And I think that is something that's really going to be huge. Uh, now, um, Asan, you had mentioned that it's 47 a month or 470 for the year. They'll save two months. Is it always going to remain 47 a month or do you <laughs> see, do you see it changing? Hey, my price yesterday is not my price today. <laughs> you gotcha. know that. That's what we're going to be doing because we know that we add a lot of value mm-hmm. and the more people that join, we're going to definitely increase our prices. And so what we're doing is we're really this for this early group, you know, they have the, you have the opportunity to come on, be a part of something when it started, have a lower rate, a lifetime rate. And because that's what we want to do. We we're, we're helping us. You're helping us grow and build this offering, but also we want to honor you. A lot of places don't honor, you know, what we would call legacy, you know, individuals that they come on board and they commit and they with you the, the, for the long haul. And then all of a sudden their prices are getting, you know, hiked up to what everybody else who's just starting a day, but we want to honor you. We want to, we want you to come in and stick with us and grow with us. And um, who knows, you might be even someone who's, um, coming in and assisting us in, in, uh, on the back end on the, you know, so that's exactly. something else that, you know, moderating and things of that nature as we grow. So yep. it's going to be exciting for you to come on board. Yeah. And the cool thing that you mentioned is lifetime, right? So if someone were to enroll at the $47 price point, they're going to be at that price point, um, for the, as long as they remain in the membership. Mm-hmm. So, um, you grandfathered in. So as the prices start to increase, you still remain at the forty seven dollars a month price point, so that's um that's a really good deal yeah it's amazing it it really is the the wealth of knowledge that we have on those calls is just just amazing and then the collective conversation mm-hmm. because that that makes it even deeper and it expands and broadens the the dialogue so Absolutely. definitely you take advantage of it Absolutely, because you know from us speaking, the people kind of have an idea of what we bring to the table. But with Mike not being here, uh, we can tell you he pretty much um, he specializes in the almost like the psychological part of mm-hmm. of menswear. Like dressing well is one thing, but what does dressing what does the way that you dress says um, say about, about you? You. Yep. you know, so that's yep. very important. This is something that I don't really cover that much in my um, in my stuff. But that's what makes the the mastermind so great is that you're getting three different perspectives. And Mike is also um, really into colors. Um, so you're really getting three different perspectives from three guys that um, know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. I, I would yeah. say even just to add to that, Vladimir cut you off, but mm-hmm. I would say that, you know, Mike would be your your custom clothier perspective. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, that's true. Yep. definitely understands fabric functionality to blast point. Mike has a really deep perspective of you know, see how put on your clothes and see how it fits you. Where <laughs> if I if I didn't, hope I didn't butcher his quote, but you know his tagline. <laughs> I think you it's try I mean? that but, on, right? Yeah, yeah. Try, try that, that on, on and see how it fits you. <laughs> see how <laughs> it's a classic, though. <laughs> yeah, and and Mike has a very unique style. I mean, you know, yeah. and I, I like to say, you know, I always called Mike like my uh, uh, ultra dandy to me, but not not to the point where. um you're at a point where you can't respect and appreciate it. He has a very unique approach of his look. And then you have Vlad classic, you know, suit wear, men's wear. Um, then myself again, a mix between thrift, uh, juxtaposed with, um, you know, again, adult street. So I can make that juxtaposition between the two, which really makes, um, somewhat of a well-rounded person who wants that. And also have a great perspective of color as well. Well, I think um, it's well said, man. So how would the people go about enrolling into the Menswear Mastermind? So what you would do, you go to patreon.com forward slash menswear mastermind. You can join there. Um, we'll reach also, out to you. I'll we'll drop the link in the in the show notes as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we'll see you. See you there. And we'll see you. Hopefully we'll see you absolutely on the live just to kind of check it out, get get our vibe and see how we flow together. I think it's important that you do that so you can hear how we flow and, and hear those questions. And then, you know, I think it'll be intriguing for you to take advantage of this very nominal um, monthly commitment and investment to yourself, um, because when you make that investment, it's not only just you. 
it's everyone that's around you. They benefit from your knowledge. They benefit Thanks. from your expansion. They benefit from you broaden your perspective. And then obviously you grow as well. Cause again, we're not just talking about clothing, you know, clothing is cool, but we're so much deeper than clothing and we're more complex as human beings. And so well said. we do get it, get uh, into the psychology of things as well. Well said, well said. All right. So um, if there are any questions, definitely reach us on Instagram. My email is vr at chaseandrider.com. If there are any questions about the mastermind. Um, now back to the wardrobe audit. Uh, what do you think about the advice that you were given? Do you think that's something that you can use going forward or how did it go? Hey, man, I came to the God, you know, what I mean? so <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's it's it really helped me put things into perspective. It gave me um, a direction that I can go into and it allows me to not second guess my thoughts, mm -hmm. but it just, you know, confirms what I was thinking in my head. And then yeah. it, it, again, as coaches tweaking, you know what I mean? It's just like it moved to exactly. the side a little bit, just, it's exactly. like no other type of coaching. So it's, it was great, Vlad. I really appreciate it, man. No, that's what's up. It was easy because once again, you already know what you're doing. Yeah. It was some, uh, just a matter of me kind of pointing you in the right direction. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that you got something out of it because I know I definitely did. And hopefully really the people did. will as well. That that wide the wider lapel was something that I take away from me is the wider lapel, mm -hmm. um, the pleat, and the cuff. Those three yes, things, sir. absolutely, um, it were really good for me. Yeah, those things go a long way for sure. Because they definitely the sets you apart from the rest of the rest of the guys in suits out there. You know, oh, they ain't ready. Word. <laughs> I put on that. Suit. I'm already. I'm so hyped about the suit game. Boy. Word. Word. I can't wait. Glad. Glad. So yes, thank sir. you, man. I appreciate you. No, it's my pleasure, man. So thank you for tuning in to episode 26 of the Wardrobe Audit. And come back again next week for another fire episode of I'm Not a Gentleman. Peace. Peace. Back in that, back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Back in that, yeah. Tell them to watch.